welcome to another episode of Go Statesman TV, Delta State Sports fans. I'm Katie Smith. And I'm Herb Brooks. We're going to check in on several sports in this episode. There is a lot going on. Swimming hosted its second consecutive Division I opponent at the DSU Aquatic Center. We're also going to take a look at the 28th annual Pig Picking. Absolutely. Statesman football had a bye week, and we're going to check in and see how the other GSC schools did this weekend. And also, Statesman soccer had a home game, but they also went on the road. We'll check in on them and see the highlights. And some big news there for the men's soccer team, so we'll get to that. Finally, basketball practice officially begins this week. We'll have that for you in the next Go Statesman TV episode. But before we start talking actual season, we'll have a few preseason stories for you with basketball. Let's get the show underway. We're headed to the pool first. Welcome to the DSU Aquatic Center here on the campus of Delta State University. I'm James Malone for Go Statesman TV. The Delta State Lady Statesman and Statesman hosted their second consecutive Division I opponent of the season, Western Kentucky Hilltoppers and Lady Toppers here from the Aquatic Center. Let's see how the teams did. Three Statesman swimmers took first place in the pool against WKU. Yvonne Neese nice swam a 51-35 in a 100 backstroke to win the race. A 21-36 put Bear Isles on top in the 50 freestyle. And the 100 freestyle went to Fabrice Wendell with a time of 46.56. Nice finished second in the 200 backstroke, and Wendell came in second in the 200 free. Bear is one of the toughest competitors we have on this team. He, he'll race anybody, anytime. He's not one of the biggest guys, but he swims tall in the water. And uh, his, his passion bucket was full today. Ben Vaughn and Vlad Zinka also secured runner-up points. Vaughn in the 500 freestyle and Zinka in the 100 fly and 200 fly. At the diving end of the pool, Matt Swain recorded a combined 289.72 points on the one-meter board. It was a second-place finish for Swain, but that's good enough for the sophomore to qualify for the NCAA Division II meet in March. On the three-meter board, Swain took first place with 234.97 total points. It feels really awesome to get out of the way. Now I'm, like the stress is off my shoulders. I can go into all my meets knowing I have a score. It's going to be relaxed and calm, so it's very good to get out of the way early. I was great. I, I just found out about Matt. I, I'm so happy for him. Um, I know he's been working really hard, and I know he's going to do real well the rest of the season. Well, that's the biggest thing I have to do now is get my three-meal list up. I need some more DD, and hopefully getting a, a score on that will be even better. Definitely my board work, that always needs improvement. My hurdle today was not the best, but and definitely three meters. Three meter, three meter, three meters. Really what I gotta do. For the Lady Statesman, freshman Melanie Tomers was the star of the meet, making school history when she won two races. Head coach Dale Murray says Tomers wins are the first time a Lady Statesman has taken first place in two races against a Division I opponent. Tomers won the 200 free and the 200 IM. It feels amazing. I didn't knew that I could swim so fast now because I never was so fast in practice before and I don't know, I don't have a reward for my feelings now. I'm just really happy that I came here and I have all these new experiences I make and it's really, it's really good. I'm really proud. As far as the individual races, that's the first time we've ever had anybody win an individual event or relay event on the girls team against the Division One, And we had a lot of really close races, so I know they're very excited and enthusiastic about the rest of the year. And on the guys' side, they've been great. They've been working really hard. I know they're tired, they're broken down, they're beat down but it doesn't matter, they're ready to race. Other Lady Statesmen scored second place points for the team. Kim Barna swam a time of 10 minutes, 43.76 seconds in the 1,000 freestyle. In the 100 backstroke, Kirsten Page finished at 58.80. Chloe Bennett was runner up in the 100 free with a 53.49. And at 59.62 put Danielle Dugas in second place in the 100 fly. Real impressed with the racing. That was one of the things we had talked to everybody before this meet happened. And the best thing they did is they, they made sure that anybody that they were racing against, didn't matter what lane they were in, they got up and were able to compete. And that's something that we've struggled with early on in the season. So very impressed with the second effort this year. As far as training, not too much is different. What we do while we're on the bus and travel, and we do some things a little bit different than what we do here. Uh, for a home meet, and we just started that last year, and uh, we're going to continue that next year. That, that's one of the biggest hurdles for any team, being able to get on a bus, and you're sitting down and then having to travel and get out of the bus and go compete and use your legs in a leg-dominated sport. Everyone's a little bit fatigued, so that's, that'll be a new challenge, new wrinkle for us uh, starting next month. The two Division twos we've got off the bat are very good, very good opponents. Um, with Missouri S&T, they've won our conference title the last seven years in a row. That'll be a guys-only 
uh, meet and competition. And that's a very difficult pool to swim in. And then we have the national champions for the last seven, eight years, on um, the guys and girls side with Drury. So we've got really good competition coming up and we'll find out where we're at. Western Kentucky came into the DSU Aquatic Center swimming both the men's and women's competition. Lay Stason lost 195 to 90, while the statesmen were close, losing 182.5 to 107.5 with a tie for first place in one of the events. I'm James Vallone for Go Statesman TV. Abraham's, an historic downtown Cleveland, is Clova Delta since 1979. Shirt, sweaters, and khakis by Southern Tide and Polo are favorites on all college campuses. Costa sunglasses with mountain khakis and jeans by Big Star, True Religion, and Silver. Abraham's has a large assortment of the North Face and Patagonia outerwear for men, women, and children. Cole Hahn and Tom Shoes, plus the finest tie collection in Mississippi. Team up with dress shirts by Polo and Ike Behar. Abraham's carries a large inventory of fine suits and sport coats by Ralph Lauren, S. Cohen, and Abraham's own private label. Abraham's in historic downtown Cleveland. Millions of people grow up in a family of immigrants. But not everyone stops at nothing to reach their dream. Even fewer have the patience, passion, and perseverance to achieve success. A dream is for those who sleep. I live mine. I'm Pitbull, and I'm one of a kind. Dolly. As an economist, I meet with many business leaders who just don't understand the true cost of documents. Unmanaged fleets, dysfunctional workflow, it's chaos. It's profit-killing chaos. Mississippi owned and operated, the image specialist in Southern Duplicating is Mississippi's only full-line Kia Sera dealer. Kia Sera's full-line copiers, printer, and faxes offer robust work solutions while offering industry-leading lowest total cost of ownership. Offering rental, leasing, and purchasing options, let the image specialist in Southern Duplicating help grow your business. The Sunflower Clinic in Ruleville next to North Sunflower Medical Center is your answer for medical attention when you need help now. The Sunflower Clinic is open every day until midnight, and with wait times averaging less than one hour, you are in and out and on the road to recovery in no time. The Sunflower Clinic treats all ages, so when problems arise and you need help now, tell someone close, take me to Ruvo. 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 We are here for you at the Sunflower Clinic in Ruvo. Take me to Ruvo. 28th annual pig picking definitely underway. Check out this line behind me. This is where you get the food and it is good. Let's go around. Let's see some of the barbecuers. Let's check out the judges who judge the competition and just see all the people that came out for pig picking. Well, this is uh, Polk's sausage that they've great and generous to donate to Delta State. They've been a real good partner for Delta State. Oh, uh, show. Just kind of it around. Uh, we've got, I don't know, 200 or so, 250 pounds of sausage, 450 pounds of chicken, and we've cooked 52 bucks. So we're trying to feed the masses. We lit the grill at 2 o'clock yesterday, and it's been going nonstop ever since. We competed in the beans. Uh, the ribs, the Boston butt, the chicken, and the sausage. So we did just about everything. And we, what did we stay out here? About 3.30 last night. Yeah. We got back out at 6 this morning. Okay, here with barbecue competition chair Dana George. Dana, is this the most important part of the day? To the barbecue teams, yes. Okay. To us, not necessarily. We have a football game at 6 o'clock. We do? We do. There's a football game? Always. Who are we playing? We are playing Florida Tech. Oh, okay. We're winning. Oh, that's good. Sure, okay, yeah. back to the barbecue competition. Mm -hmm. How many teams do we have this year? We have 22 teams. How has it been going since it all started Friday night? It's been really good. We added some things this year, some new um, categories. They competed in sauce beans and ribs that they've not competed in at this competition before, so I think that's been really good. So another good reason why pig picking is the time to come to Cleveland. Absolutely. It's like a once-in-a-lifetime chance. Absolutely. Okay, so you got your judges behind us. They're checking out the barbecue. What, what do you want them to get out of this competition? I want them to leave, of course, with a full belly. Um, and a, a pleased palate, but most of all, having ex having had a wonderful experience at Delta State. And do you think they've got plenty of good barbecue here to Absolutely. judge? Absolutely. Good. Absolutely. Good. All right. Thanks, Dana. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, now we're here with really the big boss because this is the pig picking master, Jeffrey Ferris. Jeffrey, how is it stacking up so far to all the other pig pickings you've been a part of? Man, Katie, uh, pig picking is off and running this year. It's, it's just a little bit after one o'clock. The park is full. There's families everywhere. Lots of activities going on. Uh, our DSU uh, all-star cheerleaders just performed. Our DMI bands are about to kick off. Uh, the cook teams have been cooking since yesterday afternoon. Man, it's a good time for Cleveland, Mississippi and Delta State University. Wow, you know, this is a huge event. It's, it's way more than just pig picking, but for pig picking, what is your favorite part of this? Well, my favorite part, I'm going to be real honest okay. with you. I love sitting back away from the, away from the <laughs> scene and watching families come across the Statesman right. Park Bridge underneath the arch and just walk out into the park. It's really a, a, a fun sight to see and uh, it just makes it all worthwhile at the end of the day to put on an event like this uh, through the Alumni Foundation Office and working with athletics and the university because we could not do it without working together. And let me tell you, it's a challenge, but we all do a great job to, to work together and, and continue to improve and grow this signature event of Delta State University. It's a great day to be at Delta State. Thanks, Jeffrey. It is. Thank you. Katie. All right, here with the big man now, Athletic Director Ronnie Myers. Ronnie, how's it going so far with Pig Picking? It's been a great day. We started out this morning, several of us got five o'clock. Uh, blocked off the roads for the 22nd annual Dell State Triathlon, Triathlon, which is a great event that we put on each year and have a lot of fun. Had some great athletes here today and uh, had some great winners in the races. They look forward to it every year, so it's an exciting event. And finished that up and then came over to watch the Down and Dirty with the kids. And what an awesome event! Mm -hmm. Just having so many families out here with their children and enjoying the day and watching those kids go through those obstacles, you know. I think I see a few future statesmen, oh, lady yeah? statesmen good, out there. Yeah, good. They, they look pretty good. You've been to lots of pig pickings in your time at Delta State. What's your favorite part about the event? Uh, I think the favorite part about the event is just seeing the crowd here. You know, getting this number of people to Cleveland, Mississippi on a Saturday afternoon and a great weather like this and, and seeing friends come back. Uh, everywhere I go, I just, you know, I'm running into people that, play football here, play basketball, they went to school here, so it's a great time for them to come back. All right, you heard it straight from the boss in his golf cart. So as you saw, there was a lot of barbecue, lots of people, lots of Delta State fans out here. Reporting in Cleveland, I'm Katie Smith. Last week, the Statesman had a bye. This week, Delta State's football program preps to take on Tarleton State. The Texans make the trip from Stephenville, Texas to Cleveland for a 6 o'clock kickoff on Saturday night. Delta State comes into the game 3-2 and two on the season, while Tarleton State is 5-0 and oh, and coming off an upset win over then number 4 ranked West Texas A&M, 31-27. It will be a break in conference action for the Statesman, but the team will have three more chances to jump back into the Gulf South Conference race. After this past weekend's games, the GSC football standings look like this. West Alabama is the only unbeaten team remaining in league play. The Tigers upset Valdosta State last week 49-30 and are now 3-0 and number one in the conference. With the Blazers falling to 2-1, it's now a three-way tie for second place between your Delta State statesman, Valdosta State, and North Alabama. West Georgia is holding down the number five ranking in conference standings with a 1-1 one one GSC record. Florida Tech and Shorter are both winless in league games and they are tied for sixth. For Ghost Statesman TV, I'm Matt Jones. The former Pure Oil Station in Ruleville is now the Sunflower Eye Station with Dr. Ed Egger. The Sunflower Eye Station specializes in everything from simple eye exams to standard prescription lenses with your choice of stylish frames. We also offer colored contact lenses and prescription sunglasses from Costa Del Mar. If you're experiencing headaches from eye strain or just need a prescription upgrade, we can handle all your family's vision needs. So come see us at the Sunflower Eye Station in Ruleville and start seeing your world in pure vision. As an economist, I meet with many business leaders who just don't understand the true cost of documents. Unmanaged fleets, dysfunctional workflow, it's chaos. It's profit killing chaos. Mississippi owned and operated, the image specialist in Southern Duplicating is Mississippi's only full-line Kyocera dealer. Kyocera's full-line copiers, printer, and faxes offer robust work solutions while offering industry-leading lowest total cost of ownership. Offering rental, leasing, and purchasing options, let the image specialist in Southern Duplicating help grow your business. Millions of people grow up in a family of immigrants. 
But not everyone stops at nothing to reach their dream. Even fewer have the patience, passion, and perseverance to achieve success. A dream is for those who sleep. I live mine. I'm Pitbull, and I'm one of a kind. Darling. Abraham's in historic downtown Cleveland is Clove Delta since 1979. Shirts, sweaters, and khakis. My Southern Tide and Polo are favorites on all college campuses. Costa Sunglasses with mountain khakis and jeans. My Big Star, True Religion, and Silver. Abraham's has a large assortment of the North Face and Patagonia outerwear for men, women, and children. Cole Hot and Tom Shoes plus the finest tie collection in Mississippi. Team up with dress shirts by Polo and Ike Behar. Abraham's carries a large inventory of fine suits and sport coats by Ralph Lauren, S. Cohen, and Abraham's own private label. Abraham in historic downtown Cleveland. North Sunflower Medical Center in Ruval is proud to announce the addition of board-certified orthopedic surgeon Dr. Wayne Dotson to our team. An orthopedic surgeon treats musculoskeletal trauma, skeletal disease, and sports injuries using both surgical and non-surgical techniques, including joint replacement, arthroscopic surgery, and more. Dr. Dotson has extensive experience in the Delta and beyond using the latest in surgical techniques when needed to ensure a healthy and speedy recovery. Call or have your provider refer you to Dr. Wayne Dotson for a consultation and find out why more people are saying, take me to Ruval. Welcome back to Go Statesman TV. I'm Herb Brooks. I'm out here at Delta Field. The Statesmen are about to take on Mississippi College. We'll see how things turn out a little later on. Let's check out the highlights. This was actually the second time this season the Statesmen and the Choctaws met on the pitch. The two squads played in an exhibition game before the season officially began back in August. Early in the first half here, Delta State's controlling the ball. Bryce Childers gets through a handful of defenders, takes a shot just off the side of the net. The Statesman trailed 1-0 after Mississippi College score in the 11th minute. Paul Ochnicki even sings up one all with a little chip shot over the goalkeeper. Just a few minutes later, Statesman looking to take the lead. Austin Jackman shot just over the crossbar. Amin Ramani with a nice little touch pass to Joe Stockglausner. He creates a shot, but it's right at the goalie. We're in the second half now. The Choctaws are trying to clear it out of their box. It goes straight to Ochnicki, who puts it on goal. Mississippi College took a 2-1 lead in the 75th minute. Not so fast, the Statesman fight back. Jackson Lambert to Amin Romani, shot in the upper left-hand corner for a goal. The Statesman tied things up 2-2 in the 85th minute. Let's go to overtime. 10 seconds left in regulation. Jackson Lambert puts it in the box. It's cleared out by the Choctaws. Bryce Childers puts it back in. All Frazier Payne's head. Oh, just a save by the goalie. Double overtime action now. Jackson Lambert with a free kick. Puts it up in the air just long enough for the goalie to make the catch. Mississippi College nets the game-winning goal in the 104th minute, taking a 3-2 victory over Delta State in double overtime. Oh, it was a it was a slugfest, you know, with the field, the pitch is wet, and um, you know our guys just they, they, we came back twice from being down, and um, I thought in the second half we were fantastic. Um, they, we were a bit unfortunate, very unfortunate to not to not go ahead because um, they played they played absolutely fantastic in the second half. The Statesman fall to 0-8-1 on the season, but head coach Nick Glazer says there is still plenty of soccer left to play. This is a tough game. We've had, we have a tough competition. Um, we're learning every day. The one thing we've, we've decided now that we're going to do is we're going to be a hard-working team, and it took us a while to do that. Um, we, sometimes we thought we were something else, um, and you know now we, we've got that instilled into our team, and I think it's just going to increase um, as we move into, in, into the final third of our season. And there you have it, Statesman battled back, but suffered a 3-2 to two double overtime loss at the hands of Mississippi College. I'm Herb Brooks for Go Statesman TV. We'll see you later. Okay, let's talk about some administrative things here at Delta State Athletics. I'm joined by Dana George. Dana is the advisor for the Student Athlete Advisory Committee. And one big thing the Student Athlete Advisory Committee participates in is D2's philanthropic focus, which is Make-A-Wish. Dana, why do you think that Make-A-Wish is a, is a good charity to be a part of? I think Make-A-Wish is important because it does offer children with life-threatening um, illnesses an opportunity to experience something that can really be life-changing. And this past week was the National Week of Wishes. Delta State Athletics in the SAC uh, participated in that a few different ways. What did we do? We did a couple different things, but mostly we focused on encouraging our student athletes to be involved, 
Um, we, we did try to raise some funds. Uh, we had a, a dough raiser with Domino's where we um, encouraged people to purchase pizzas and Domino's gave back a dollar for every pizza that was purchased. And we found out yesterday that it was two, $267 that we raised for Make-A-Wish, which is almost the, ex uh, almost the same amount that we raised the entire year last year. So we're pretty excited about every dollar we raised this year. We're really trying to make a push this year for, um, to increase our involvement for that for make a wish and I know we were involved in Oktoberfest too mm -hmm. with aluminum cam donations mm -hmm. what do you expect to come out of that you know it it's a new thing it's something that we just started this year it's something that obviously the people weren't necessarily familiar with if we raised eight dollars we've raised eight dollars more than we raised last year I know that they got several bags on Saturday morning of cans so I'm excited to see what we come back with we haven't turned those in yet and we actually had so much interest garnered from it that that's what I'm excited to see we had people asking us could they bring their cans to us today things like that so we're excited to see what comes out of it great and, and there are other things that are going on throughout the rest of the year I know at football games we've got donation mm -hmm. cans out there just mm -hmm. throw some spare change in there that's right we have spare change drive at every concession stand for, at every sporting event throughout the year mm -hmm. and then we're also going to have our 50 50 rollover raffle and we'll do that at all four football games we did it the first time we raised four hundred and nineteen dollars for make-a-wish at our first home football game and we hope to do that or more at every game throughout the rest of the season so do we have a goal for this year funds wise mm -hmm. we'd like to raise five thousand dollars which is the amount that make a wish says cost or an average wish costs so we can't necessarily sponsor a specific wish right now but we would like to raise five thousand and say that we raised enough to cover the cost of a wish that's great and if people want to donate just right now if they're watching this video mm -hmm. say I want help what can they do um, obviously they can contact us it's probably the easiest way is to just call the office 662-846-4300 um, and we can certainly make that happen. There's also a website, ssl.wish.org slash NCAA D2 or DII. Um, and if they go to that, they can actually select Mississippi and select Delta State and they can make a donation in Delta State's honor. All right. Thanks, Dana. We'll, we'll check back with you a little later in here to see how this is going. Thank you. Millions of people grow up in a family of immigrants. But not everyone stops at nothing to reach their dream. Even fewer have the patience, passion, and perseverance to achieve success. A dream is for those who sleep. I live mine. I'm Pitbull, and I'm one of a kind. Darling. Abraham's, an historic downtown Cleveland, has clothed the Delta since 1979. Shirts, sweaters, and khakis by Southern Tide and Polo are favorites on all college campuses. Costa Sunglasses with mountain khakis and jeans by Big Star, True Religion, and Silver. Abraham's has a large assortment of the North Face and Patagonia outerwear for men, women, and children. Cole Hot and Tom Shoes plus the finest tie collection in Mississippi. Team up with dress shirts by Polo and Ike Behar. Abraham's carries a large inventory of fine suits and sport coats by Ralph Lauren, S. Cohen, and Abraham's own private label. Abraham in historic downtown Cleveland. The Sunflower Clinic in Rural next to North Sunflower Medical Center is your answer for medical attention when you need help now. The Sunflower Clinic is open every day until midnight, and with wait times averaging less than one hour, you are in and out and on the road to recovery in no time. The Sunflower Clinic treats all ages, so when problems arise and you need help now, tell someone close, take me to Ruvo. 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 We are here for you at the Sunflower Clinic in Ruvo. Take me to Ruvo. As an economist, I meet with many business leaders who just don't understand the true cost of documents. Unmanaged fleets, dysfunctional workflow, it's chaos. It's profit-killing chaos. Mississippi owned and operated, the image specialist in Southern Duplicating is Mississippi's only full-line Kyocera dealer. Kyocera's full-line copiers, printer, and faxes offer robust work solutions while offering industry-leading lowest total cost of ownership. Offering rental, leasing, and purchasing options, let the image specialist in Southern Duplicating help grow your business. The Delta State men's and women's basketball teams have a new toy. It's called the gun. It started as a, it was called a shoot -away. And the guy who invented this shoot away turned it into this machine that will pass the ball back to the shooter. And the balls actually go in, you know, you can shoot them in, whatever, and they stay in the net, they funnel into the machine, shoot it out. So the, 
what it really is, it's an opportunity to get a lot of shots up in a short period of time that makes it fun, it gets our guys in here. We can use it a little bit in practice, a little bit for drills, but it's, it's been really good. Head coach Jim Boone says the gun is a great way for the statesmen to get in the gym on their own time and get more shots up in a shorter time. We need this. It's a, it's a great investment for us because it's something that helps our uh, guys not only improve, but feel good about themselves and feel good about Delta State and that we are giving them every opportunity to be the best basketball player that they can possibly be. The machine keeps track of a player's shots, how many they have attempted, and how many they have made. Each player basically has an ID number they can put into the gun. The guys use it as a one-on-one -on -one competition as well. You come in any night and there's a lineup for the guys to use the gun, so everyone, we're, it shows in practice we're all knocking down shots, so it gets competitive and like, just a lot of fun. I mean, I've never shot on one like this before, but it's really good. Like, counts you make, so you don't have to, like, you don't lose track, counts your shots, and it adds up to a percentage. And then also, you plug it into the, the numbers into the computer, and it shows where you shoot best from around the court. So it's, yeah, it's, it's really good. So in the game, you know, like, I can get my shots from here and here, and this is what percentage I'll be shooting from, so, yeah. Basketball season begins Tuesday with the first official practice. For Ghost Statesman TV, I'm Philip Tang. Basketball season officially gets underway this week with the first practices of the 2013-2014 season. Without even playing a game, the Delta State women's basketball team is already getting some recognition. The Division II Bulletin released its national preseason poll last week and the Lady Statesmen earned a top 10 spot sitting at number 8. It is a great honor for, for the returners. Uh, just kind of from, from what they accomplished last year, uh, that they're thought of that highly to uh, to have that ranking in the preseason. I, I kind of laughed about it that, that Southern California's uh, football team was preseason number one last year and, and 12 months later the, the coach is without a job. Uh, so that's about how much preseason rankings mean. But it is an honor for our returners and I'm, I'm excited for them and, and we do have some expectations and, and we hopefully uh, can live up to that. DSU finished 21 and 10 last season and 13 and five in Gulf South Conference play. The Lady Statesmen went a couple games deep into the NCAA Division II tournament and eventually lost in the South Region Championship game. That was definitely a good first season for head coach David Midlick, but he says the past is in the past. You know, we have five newcomers. I think that the, the returners have put that in the past. Uh, they realize that you know, we have different chemistry this year for, for better or for worse. And um, you know, we're, it sounds like coach speak. I think every coach can say the exact same thing this time of year. but. We're just going to have to get better each day. We, we really are. We had a, a good one-hour session tonight, and we'll, we'll hope to build on that every day and, and hopefully be, be better each day when we leave the gym. When practice does get underway, the Lady Statesmen have less than a month to prepare for the opening games on November 8th and 9th at the West Florida Classic. It's Christmas Day for coaches, so you know we'll, we'll get to go Monday, actually, the way the rules are. Um, and so we'll be real excited. We'll get two weeks of practice for our first closed scrimmage, and I'll be excited to get them out on the floor for two hours. You about break a sweat and get into things, and an hour's over, so it goes by quickly. And I think when you're a player, uh, you think that this time lasts forever, from mid-October till you start playing in mid-November. But as a coach, there's so much to put in and do that you know, we have, we're ready to get going on Monday. DSU will face Tuskegee and Lynn during the two-day event in Pensacola. For Ghost Statesman TV, I'm Caroline George. A few out-of-town results for you here to wrap up this Go Statesman TV. The men's and women's soccer teams had a two-game road trip. First, it was to Alabama Huntsville, where the Lady Statesmen picked up their first conference win of the season, beating the Chargers 2-1. Huntsville won out on the men's side, though, beating the Statesmen 3-1. From there, it was on to Union University in Jackson, Tennessee. The Lady Statesmen fell 1-0, but in a very exciting game on the men's side. Double overtime to decide this one and the Statesmen pulled off their first win of the season, beating Union 2-1. to The State's Amin Romani scored on a penalty kick to get the win. The women's cross-country team was in Montevallo, Alabama over the weekend for the Falcon Classic 5K. DSU's top five finishers were Annalie Pierce, Tressa Lamb, Kelsey Shoemate, Anna Poteet, and Hannah Register. The Lady Statesmen took a fifth-place team finish, and Pierce notched her second top ten finish with a 24-46 5K. Plenty of exciting action here in Cleveland, Mississippi this week. Men's and women's soccer have home matches on Friday and Sunday. And let's not forget, football has a home match against Tarleton State on Saturday. And that's going to be an interesting one. We just found out Tarleton ranked number 14 in the nation. They're undefeated. We're looking at a tough opponent with this one. We sure are. They have won seven straight on the road so far this season. It also dates back to last season. So 
We'll see what they got. But Statesman football is always good, especially at home. We'll see you there. We'll have those highlights in the next Go Statesman TV. Herb and I will be back then. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.